thrown something away. I don't know the words, just found it the other day. <laughs> anyway, how y'all doing? It's good to see you. Good to have you. How you doing? How you been? How you been? Where you been? Hi! Uh, anyway, sorry, there's a notification on the bottom of my OBS, my slobs. The overlays will get you WS, probably, and I assume they mean wet? Like, that's, that's risque, slobs. And presumptuous. Here, I'm using one of your overlays and I fucking love it, but that's neither here nor there. Anyway, we're gonna get back to the beast inside. Uh, having a difficult choice because there's so many good games I can play for free on various platforms. Plus, like, Warframe's got a new download, our new DLC, and I haven't played that in forever. Though, like, oh, it's a restart for beginners, and yeah, I'm like, ah, Warframe in forever. But I want to finish this. This is our free to play, one of our free to play games from uh, Amazon Prime for this month. Uh, the Beast Within, horror game. Good, bad, I don't know yet. I'm pretty sure in our past story arc that it's either the son or the father that's the killer, and in our present day story arc, I really have no idea what the fuck's going on. <laughs> Here, he'll tell us. How in the hell? Keys in a diary from over a century ago. Fucking hell, but it's impossible. You're right, it is, unless they also have the diary. It worked. Maybe if I find the other pages from the diary, if those telegrams are ever going to be decoded, I have to take every chance. Girl, I'll take your chance. I'll notify Dan. This will blow his mind. I've made more progress than his entire team has in months. Also, this present day storyline annoys me because, like, computers are cryptographer for the U.S. government and is trying to figure out some Russian communiques. Went out to the middle of the woods, and then weird shit started happening. He didn't immediately evacuate and call the government to back his ass up. I mean, come on. Commencing Operation Dead Silence. Deploying missiles by submarine along the west coast of the U.S. will begin on the night of October 6th through 7th. Our jamming systems have been tested and are fully operational. The IA is still investigating an updated case of I don't know if I trust your uh, translation there, bub. Uh, Delineator! Journal of Fashion, Culture, and Fine Arts. Go angry, I can throw a chair. Honestly, I'm more interested in what's happening in the past. I don't really care about the present day. Present day, for the record, is 70s. Why are we painting if you're just gonna wallpaper the whole fucking house? Anyway. Operator, give me Klondike 5545! He's losing his shit. Fuck, they must have tapped my line. How in the world did they track me down so quickly in this shithole? Fuck me. Maybe they did get Harold after all. Take the localizer from the up and check where they're tracking me from. I'm yeah, the localizer is another thing that bothers me. Such bullshit science that's trying to be like, no, no, we thought it through. Honestly, it's like quantum and shit. Like, fucking demons. Find the quantum cloud. You know what I'm saying? Kill me again. Again? I saw someone. What are you talking about? Someone's here, in front of the house. But maybe it's someone from the office? You know, about a week? They didn't tell me. Son of a bitch, it's all so clear now. Is it? You don't think that. I do. They want to get us, so nothing will surprise me. A few days ago, someone was hanging around here, too. I, 
I caught a glimpse of him behind the tree. Didn't you say anything? You didn't think it was worth mentioning? <laughs> it might as well have been my imagination. I didn't want to spread panic. Because That's what your husband does for a living. Oh, fuck Emma! I don't work in a bakery. I work for fucking spies. It's not like we can just go to a mountain cabin and be safe. Stay in the house, lock the doors and windows. I'll take care of this. I want to take a gun. You work for spies! But now nah, it's cool. He's got a glorified camcorder. See if I can find something nearby. Also, again, you two need to get a divorce. You clearly not like each other much. Like, no reason you have to be together. All right, we're on the right trail. You're only one. Something from somewhere. That boy. Oh, nope. Older. Warmer. Getting hot. Red hot. Anomaly detected. Anomaly detected. Anomaly detected. Anomaly detected. Sorry. I can't control myself sometimes. Oh, there's one. Hmm. Yeah! Fuck that anomaly. Oh, hi, Faden! Thank you for the contribute. I need to play that game actually. They just released a content update. Yeah. Maybe if I can find more traces. Fucked your fake entities up with my fake gun. Also pushing the wrong buttons, which explains why I can't move. How you been? Think how are things at the uh well, the shithole, whose name I'm currently blanking on. Hey, that place. I'm trying not to, like, actually name the place. Cool. The signal is very clear. Quantum clouds would be right around here. Shorthand, or... It looks very Take rare. name. I'm tired. You Your mother? Lines are coming together. I'm close to the source now. Oh, that works. Finally okay? Why, oh, finally? Oh, there. Cross I don't know. The fence. I need to get over there. I don't have to do it. Let's pay taxes and die. You can't hide. Can't hide. Why is he using graph paper for his threatening method? It's not just me, right? It's a little weird. Ah, uh, fair. I had a problem with the place. I like the place. And I don't choose ass hats that ran it that bothered me. Miss the people, though. I haven't talked to anybody in a while. Again? <laughs> Seems pretty normal, too, actually. Let me climb thing. Yep. <laughs> I see. Like, there's the, the right-wing talking point on all of this, right? Which is the whole, uh, oh, well, they're just making it up. That's why you're hearing so much more about it. And it's like, no, it's shit's always fucking happened. It's just, ugh. finally, people are listening. This is a good thing. People can keep it from it. But they're, of course, hoping they can get some form of power so that they can then... Now, where am I supposed to? Miami. Oh, there we go. Ah, there we go. Eh, yeah. 
Oh, hey, that's actually near me. I was trying to, like, I know names of these cities. Where the fuck are they? Rain! Harry's paid by the hour, so... Okay, so the Russians established a treehouse, which is weird, but also cool. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I'd build a treehouse. Come on. And if me and Lex ever got into an argument, I could run out of the backyard and hide in my tree fort. No girls allowed! <laughs> I <laughs> no, I, I know I've heard of these places. Got it all well organized. Oh, seriously, he is actually hiding in the treehouse. Look at that. Considering how close one of those cities is to me, I should have been able to pick up on it a fuck ton quicker. Like, just drive, like, about ten minutes that way. Fuck, I can't believe it. took that picture on the day of our arrival here. I think it's you, buddy. I think you're losing your shit, and you're back your wife. Which, to be fair, you don't seem to like each other. Item added to inventory. Transmitter? You won't lose me so easily, you bastard. Stop! Hear me? Uh, yeah, stop! Because I don't know how to get to you, so just wait there! For like, maybe half an hour. It, it could be a while, is my point. Just don't go anywhere. Okay, I found my way out. Just just wait a little bit longer. I'm, tr I'm trying not to trip. I, just, I don't want to fall. Just... Okay, no, no. See, that's the opposite of what I'm asking you to do. If you just wait just a little bit longer. Again, I should have brought a gun. Run, but you can't hide. I disagree. Oh, he's fucking Hulk. Oh. I'm very happy because Lex will be graduating from her course soon. Which means our... our we actually, I might be able to see my wife on occasion here soon. That'll be fucking nice. That was a loud noise. Are you sure you want to keep following this dude? Hey, he lost us and it was pretty easy for him. Dang. Uh, exhausted. Pretty much permanently exhausted. Perpetually broke. You know, usual. Living the American dream. <laughs> Yeah, like Lex has been like I. We both work full time, but I do most of the cooking and cleaning because she works and goes to school full time. So she's like never fucking home, like doubly exhausted. Other than that, they were pretty good. How are, how have things been over with you with you and your lady? Okay. I cut the chain. Now, what do you want me to do? Standing on it, is that... What the fuck you want me to do with this thing? Pull it out the other side, that's what she said. Yeah, I guess I could go up here. I wanted to, I just didn't. <laughs> oh, that's spoopy. Also, this guy's real quick to jump down pathways where he has, like, zero chance of getting back. The second's forethought would do you a world of fucking wonder. Also, again, you work for the government. Call in reinforcements. Also, not terribly bright, Brosif. Oh, maybe the spore's gonna get eaten by the Wendigo. I played that game. Good game. I enjoyed it. Also beginning to be a pretty good cook. And I enjoy cooking. Also, my nose is mildly leaky. It's very annoying. 
Oh, we're in the Goonies. We totally switched properties. I'm still not convinced he's on your head. That'd be nice to actually have enough income coming in that we get caught up on bills and start getting ahead. It's been rough as Lex is doing clinicals for her degree, so it's basically her doing the job that she's going to be doing, but in true American fashion without pay, and having to spend enough time at it that it's forced her to cut her hours back at the paying job. So. Yeah, we're really looking forward to this graduation for just so many reasons. Plus, she'll be a lot happier doing something that... I'm not going to say pizza delivery doesn't matter, but... Am I walk... Oh, I was crouched. Why am I walking like I had a load in my drawers? Ugh. Yeah, we actually lucked out. We bought my mom's old place. The one you've been to, actually. Our mortgage is like... I know, but you won't fucking do anything else. Our mortgage is like eight something. I should know it. I pay it. Anyway. <laughs> our mortgage is like eight something a month. We do have like a $300 a month uh, homeowners. But they also take care of all the lawn maintenance and everything on the outside of the homes. My buddy's got a much cheaper homeowners, but they don't take I like ours better. All his homeowners does is yell at him. Uh, your trash cans are outside? Well, yeah, they're behind a fucking privacy hedge. You can't see them. But they're still outside. That's no bueno. Oh. You have to come from that direction. Our homeowners, we get a new roof about every year during the hurricanes. No cost. Go back and fix it. Right? The people hear about our homeowners and like, that's ridiculously expensive. I'm like, yeah, but they actually do shit. <laughs> so, like, whatever. They can be annoying, too, sure. But. They yelled at us because we're all supposed to have the fences in the backyard. We're supposed to have a little fenced in enclosure for our AC unit. And when we got the last one replaced, the guy who replaced it was like, Yo, this fenced-in enclosure is why this fucking thing died. You're choking it. And we're like, okay, cool. We'll tear it down. So he pulled the fence up, put the new AC in. The homeowners came by and goes, oh, you're supposed to have a fence there. And we're like, yeah, we're not fucking doing that. We're not paying to replace it again. And they said, basically, oh. Okay. And then I started noticing all of our neighbors replacing, <laughs> tearing theirs down. <laughs> Where'd he got out? Oh, fuck you! Stinking red... That's the communist. Underwater cave has some very deep Lovecraftian vibes, doesn't it? I like it. I heard my buddy's HOA yelled at him once because his backyard was all tore up and the grass was dead from his bugs. They've got an eight-foot-high privacy fence. Fuck you care, you can't see it. <laughs> Why we don't go alone into weird caves chasing spies, man. It's just a bad idea. Although, kudos to the CIA for their futuristic fake technology gun still working after that. Bonham. Uh -huh. Also, I recently, as in today, just finished reading the, uh, what was that manga? Promise Neverland. Right. Uh, is this where we, so this part's gonna be where he... 
build the floor? Yeah, okay. I know where I am! Yay! That doesn't actually help me with where I'm going, and I can't go back, but still. It's nice to be loosely aware of your location. I'm in a cave. Yeah, that's not what I meant. Although, totally, be totally dope if we could meet Shellob. We'd probably die shortly after, but it'd still be a really cool and weird crossover. Stable. Yeah, it seems like a really bad idea. I take all the tension out of horror games. Ah, oh, you've been fine. Fuck, that was close. Everything was chilling in here. I would love to argue with you, but I kind of do. I've done nothing but snipe at each other. Kind of an ass. This game bounces back and forth between two time periods, and his you know, ancestor in the past is way more interesting than. Batman squeeze. I use my farts as a general form of echolocation. Whoop. Whoop. Are we still chasing the spire, or are we just trying not to die at this point? Damn, this place is in such rough shape, even the trees are falling over. Or he's drunk. Your belly boogie. There's a guy me and Lex watch on uh, YouTube called Internet Common Etiquette with Big Money Salvia. There's one particular video from a few years back where he invited his viewers to make fun of him, and someone put in Beer Belly Salvia. He had gained a decent amount of weight at that. Since then, he's gotten in shape. He one of those creator clashes and got his ass kicked in the first round. But kudos to him for trying and putting the training in and working with a trainer, you know? Your belly salvia. That's actually the song from Big Spook. It's a good channel. You should check it out. He's funny. Yeah, love those stories. And it's. I was speaking of ultra right wingers, which I was about to, and then I didn't. But speaking of ultra right wingers, apparently Steven Crowder, who's a just a hateful piece of shit that you should never, ever, ever listen to, ever, yeah, ever, especially some motherfucker makes way too much money already. Apparently, he's getting divorced, and in his video when he where he announced that, he mentioned it was because his wife decided she wanted a divorce that he didn't. That apparently that sort of thing's allowed in the state of Texas. One party just doesn't want to be married anymore. Not be married. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Why would we force her to stay married? That seems fucked. What the fuck are you talking about, you weirdo? Push it? <laughs> what the fuck you want me to do? Maybe we go outside and pull. Right wingers just have really weird ideas on shit. I can't believe she can divorce me just because she's not happy. Yeah, bro, that's something we should probably continue a lot. You, you say you believe in freedom, right? What the fuck? <laughs> Ooh! I got the weapon. This machete may be old, but it's still perfectly sharp. Blades like this were used to clear paths through the jungle, so it should still come in handy in a regular forest. It's ancient, but maybe right. it's still sharp. Like. Honestly, how it should work. Well, what the fuck are you talking about? I don't... Is it just when you want a divorce, you should be allowed, but the woman has no rights? That's exactly what, it is. exactly what he thinks, because it also came out that he had retained a divorce attorney before his wife started filing for divorce. She found out that he'd been talking to a divorce attorney, and that's what she filed. Side, but how? Yeah, I wonder. Oh, look, I figured it out. Could go through here. That's what your mama said last night. 
I don't know. I like. I asked this question rhetorically talking to Lex last night, and he immediately pointed out exactly what it is. But it's like that idea to me had always been like, like if Lex decides she doesn't want to get married, why would I? Or what doesn't want to be married anymore? Why would I force her to stay with me? Because do you really want to be married to someone who doesn't want to be married to you anymore? That seems like fucking hell. Like just nobody's gonna be happy. Like yeah, it's about control. I'm like, I'm... yeah, <laughs> obviously I'm just being an idealistic douche. But like, still, just I don't know. Dear belly salvia. I'm assuming I can't walk through water. Oh, there's a bridge. Seems safer. Hey, bridge. Oh well, wait. There's a sign. Let's read the sign. What's it say? We're going to a tower. And then there's the chapel and the fire watch. Stay out of the chapel because it makes my skin burn. I like the idea of marriage now. <laughs> Admittedly, the first marriage kind of soured me on it for a while. Anomaly detected. Anomaly detected. Anomaly detected. Ba boom. Yeah, fuck you, anomaly. What is it? There you are, you rat bastard. Oh, I see ya. Oh, you're going to die, you whore. You whore. You're like little floating space amoeba. Are you? Are you really? What a percentage. I mean, in reality, the, the idea of marriage is kind of eh. The idea is that it's a formalized commitment between you and another person, but really, why do you need the government to weigh in on that? Why do you have to sign a contract? It feels weird. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, the, the entire wedding industry is a fucking scam. Uh, our wedding rings were free. Because Lex's sister had just gotten married shortly before. They had, like, a buy a set, get a set free. They gave us the coupon for that, so we got our wedding rings for free. Like, instead of spending ass nine amounts of money we didn't have on a wedding, we just went to the courthouse and had a big old Buca de Beppo dinner with friends and family. Sucking my gut. Fat Man Squeeze! Uh, I'm using the Fat Man Squeeze reference, by the way, because... I don't know. There's a place called Rock City, a tourist trap out in the mountains. I have a place called Fat Man Squeeze, because it's really tight to get through, and I made fun of my parents, so they struggled through it. I was like nine, I think, when we went there. I was also a chubby-ass kid, but... The Fat Man Squeeze opens up on the bottom, and I was short. Fuck it, I'm fine. Y'all can struggle. As far as my mom had trouble, she's super short. Or Tim? Your belly salve. Yep. God, I'm not as fit as I used to be. I mean, yeah, sitting around decrypting messages all day will do that to you unless you go to the gym. Hey, you shut up. Alright, so before we chase this down any more, let's explore this area, because there are high odds we're going to find another item like that machete that we require for future progress. Or it could just be a dead end that looks like somewhere where we could interact with a bunch of shit and climb on things, but, uh, you know, we can't. There's reasons. Fuck you, don't judge me game development. I'll put the puzzles where I want them to. You play what I tell you to play. Just cause it looks fun. Well that's shitty. Yeah, thing. Hi thing. Back. <laughs> eh. Hey, damn it. Um Make it. I can look. I can't move the crate. That doesn't even look heavy. 
can move the planks. Kind of. I take these to the bridge. Take it to the bridge. Not gonna work. Drop it straight off. Like, it looks like it should work, right? Like, we could lay this plank down and use it as uh, the next walk, but now he's just gonna fucking drop it into the chasm. Big old douche. Oh, well, to be fair, there is nothing there. Touche, game! Also, suck a dick. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, we get tax benefits. I don't, like... All the benefits to marriage are strictly legalities, right? So, like, you get the tax. You do get a tax cut for getting marriage, getting married. Um, there's also the big thing about why Gary marriage was such a big deal that I don't feel it's enough consideration. Like, well, God says, fuck God. According to the law, there's a gay couple, and they've been living together for say 20 years and right, I'm gonna pause the game because I need to get a beer anyway just, just, I'm losing my train of thought alright so you have a gay couple's been married for like 20 years and the one dude his name's on all the property and everything else parents disowned him ages ago they've not talked in all that time and then he passes away according to the law since there's no there's an ad break <laughs> damn it or is the ad break over? I think it's telling me it's over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, without, without common law marriage, if that individual dies, then the, the estranged family gains rights to all the shit. And the person who's lived with them and built a life with them gets literally nothing, and they throw him on the street, and he has no fucking rights. So that that is one of the benefits to marriage, is now you're, you know, but you can also work out a will. So, I mean, there's... Is it beneficial? Eh, who knows? It's really up to the individuals involved. Whether they want that level of security or whatnot. Similarly, how much of the marriage shit you decide to go along with is also, you know. Ah, here's the ad. <laughs> All right. Ooh, I hope it's the new Transformers trailer. I would love for them to advertise Transformers on my channel. At least it's not a fucking Daily Wire ad. Fuck, finish. Fuck right off. I'll explain momentarily. You know, when you can hear me again. Surely I gotta do something here, right? Do, 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 what? Let's check down here. I don't think it's gonna be down here, but... I can't go backwards. I'll fucking fall. Ah! Fine. I made it. over there somewhere? F down, maybe? No. There we go. Yeah, I got a... I got a message from Twitch a while back, and they sweet-talked me into it. If I run three minutes of ads on my channel an hour and set it to autoplay a minute and a half at either end of the... or halfway through the hour and at the top of the hour, then A... They don't run any of the fucking pre-roll ads. And B, they, they pay me 50% of the ad revenue. 
Fine, I'm poor. I'll take your fucking deal, you douche nuts. Jokes on you, I have no viewers. <laughs> oh. Now I made myself sad. <laughs> That's what I said, 50%? Like, yeah, yeah. I think we need to get through this here gate, but it, it opens inwards, and this here crate's in the way, and it will not let me move that crate. Can I use these here boards as like a lever? Ever? Or put this shit here, right? And I over here and yank it this way. That'll move the crate. Exactly! That's my thoughts. I know, but I can't fucking get over there. What you want me to do? I could try to jump over there. I'm pretty sure that'll result in... Who can take a sunrise, sprinkle it with poo? In the gap! In the mother fluffing gap! Yep, we almost okay. There, nope. Yep. Nope. Okay. Yeah. No. Okay. Okay. No. Nope. Yeah, that's not gonna work. <laughs> oh. That almost worked. Uh, I broke it. Oh, yeah, that's how we're supposed to do. I don't know. I seem to know what they want me to bloody do. Ugh. Okay, well, on the bright side, we didn't die. Or at least good at Jason. Oh, I see the barrel's supposed to mark a path. I don't know. <laughs> And again, I can't do VR very well. We got the uh, Oculus Quest for Christmas a couple years ago. Like, it's fine. Like, any of the games that involve too much movement make me fucking motion sick as a sum of it. Like, if I'm up and moving around, fucking. Got a mini golf game I can play all fucking day. That thing's badass. Also, Super Hot doesn't require me to walk. Like, I've got Resident Evil 4 for it, and I fucking love the game, and it's gorgeous and super fun in VR, but like. Fucking. Oops. Um, but like, hit something and beat it. I'm moving, but then I use the VR, the hand controls to move in a different way than my feet are pointing. My brain loses its fucking mind. The in. Thanks for the Don't tip. break it. Fuck, you're still gonna use that. But then, like, they have the, the, the expensive VR headset. What is that? The the HTC Vive, I think. I've used a couple of those. My eyes are at a weird focal distance. So, like, that one, you can adjust everything to the point where it works beautifully for my eyes, and I, it doesn't affect me at all, and it's just a fucking blast to play with. But that motherfucker's, like, $4,000 or some shit. Man, I'm a brokey. I can't buy into this shit. Fuck. Love to. Fun as hell. Very eat, miss. Or you get gifts, but then you just chuck them off into the woods. I have absolutely no idea if we're going. Hey, the end. That's where we are in the past, too. That's also the one. That was the setup we played with at uh, the Halo convention, where we got to play, like, 
VR Halo. That shit was fun as fuck, even though all the guns were plasma pistols, and that part kind of sucked. But, like, they actually had that a huge square set up. They had the Omen computer so you can wear as a backpack. Five set up, and the camera set up in the four corners of this play space. So, like, you were literally walking around the arena. So there was no motion sickness because you were moving in the virtual world and the real world simultaneously. Oh my god, it was so immersive, too. My buddy's wife's armor popped off. You died, your armor would pop off and lay on the ground, and I was, like, stepping over her helmet. I'm like, that's not fucking real. Why am I fucking... There are walls popping up and down inside the arena. Like, I almost fell on my ass because I went to lean against one of these imaginary walls. It was fun as fuck. Oh my god, that was so badass. I would love, like, a really immersive JRPG in VR form. They also have met, uh... What do we have here? An old tent, some abandoned stuff? Looks like someone just left it all and never came back. But why? They have them set up at, uh... Fuck, that hotel on property. Aventura. They have them set up there. And, like, me and Lex went there shortly after we married and said it was for our honeymoon, so they gave us a free ticket to their VR thing. And, like, I was gonna... You get, like... I forget how much time you get. Yeah, yeah, it's a full... It's, like, a smaller arena, and it's single player, but, like, you can still move around and all that fun shit. And it's got a little mark on the ground, so you don't walk too far out of it and hit shit. It's a pretty cool setup. And, like, I meant to, like, switch between games and try different games for my... How, I think you get, like, 15 minutes. But, like, I started playing some... Basic cheesy ass game called Spy or Pirate Hunter Simulator or some shit. Where you're just target shooting and you got a shield you can pull up and that shit was so fucking fun I never turned it off. I had to <laughs> like this is just like a cheesy bullshit game and I'm just having an absolute blast with it. Yeet miss! Look at this. Really winning. Yeah, it's on the, I want to say it's on the second floor? You can also just go and rent time. You don't have to actually, like, stay at the hotel. Feels like something should be here, right? Back inside the tent, but... Nothing. Okay, cool. There used to be a place, they went out of business because the owners of dipshit, well, partially because of COVID, but also the owners of dipshit and wanted money. But it was like, same thing, HTC Vibes, but they would build out a set, like a section of a shopping center, and you would be walking through where you're playing the game that way. <laughs> God, I love VR. The Void. I think it was called The Void. Uh, I believe they still have videos up on YouTube. You can watch that display, like, some of how the tech worked. And it was fucking gorgeous. looked fun as shit. Also, for our quest, we had a pretty good, like, uh, cardio as program. But I did service because we haven't used it for I could go through here. monthly fee type thing. So I started going to the gym. Didn't seem worth it to keep paying them for it. But I worked up enough of a sweat that I was doing it in our family room, and the it formed a sweat barrier to my feet and the tile, and I damn near broke my damn neck. Strange that no one's been looking for him. He must have fallen off that poor guy. The backpack is hanging loosely. I think I could knock it off with a stone. I was gonna make a joke about throwing fucking rocks at him. You're a dick. Really, I've heard good things about it. Oh, sucks is in. I got you. This one was called. My phone over here. I've got an app for it on my phone. the symbol when I see it. I think that's how long I've been going to the gym. 
Supernatural. Hold on. Let's see if I can try out of this game. Uh, da, 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 da. We'll type in just supernatural, then only what we want will come up. <clears throat> yeah, my bad. <laughs> Hey, it's Leanne. Yes and no. I'm not sure if they, I'm not sure if they'll, uh... Okay, they have squats. That sweat is very realistic. Yes, uh, okay. So, Beat Saber plus squats, plus, like, um, if you know anything about football drills, the fast feet, doing this to your feet. But it's all to, like, real licensed music, and then those environments they were showing, it puts you in that environment. So, it'll be like uh, a mountain range in New Zealand, and you can actually look around and see the mountain range. I've done exercise routines on the Great Wall of China. Uh, they used. Some of the imagery from the moon landings. You can exercise on the moon for one of them. I, I mean, it's dope as fuck. It is cool as shit. There's a few rock playlists to do. Different intensity levels. Oh, there's also boxing. So it's like teaching you a few basic boxing moves. And I mean, you like dodge back and forth to work your abs and your... Yeah, dude. <laughs> the moon was my favorite. There's a few fantasy locations as well, but it's all like gorgeously rendered. Like very high quality shit. Like, I'm not kidding. It was fucking dope as shit. I loved it. <clears throat> like, if we had the time and the money to make the investment worth it, I would totally still be doing it. But, like, also, I like having the weights at the gym. But, like, there's some spots just from the earth alone that are just absolutely gorgeous, and I will probably never get a chance to see. So, it's, you know, it was just really cool to be able to sit there, like, in between songs when it's gearing up for the next one, it's giving me a little bit of a cool down, just, like, looking out over the environment. Oh, it's fucking gorgeous. There's also a guided meditation. I never use that. Because I don't have any fucking... Pro anyway. It is it is a dope-ass app, though. But you will sweat like a motherfucker. And, like, we were using the, uh, the foamy eyepiece thing. We had to put the silicone cover over it because that shit would just get so fucking... Like, I pulled it off to grab a drink of water, put it back on, and the sweat had... On ice cold from the AC and just oh it was gross it was so fucking gross it was just fucking like you could wring that bitch out like oh it was bad <laughs> oh baby I'm soaking yeah I started moving up into like the I was trying to get into shape. So I started moving up into the higher intensity workouts, and like, I damn near broke my neck in the family room because my feet were so fucking coated in sweat that I was just sliding all over the fucking tile. <laughs> yeah, okay, I, at the time I'd questioned like, can you really get a good workout from VR? No, 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 no. Yeah, the, the locations all over the Earth and seeing all that cool shit, that's, like, one of the main things I was interested in VR for. Like, I kind of wanted, because I can plug the Quest into the PC and do some of the Steam VR shit. Quest's not great at it, and it tends to overheat after a little bit and start fucking up. But like, the thing that interests me the most about VR is having experiences I can't have IRL. Like, I can't afford to travel to Japan, but I can load up the Google Earth fucking app for the quest plop myself down in the middle of Japan and look around and you know explore a little bit not, not as good as being there at all but at least it's something I can do I kind of want to also do like a a game there's a game came out a while ago we bought it when it first came out everybody hated it and then it got a shit ton of updates 
But anyway, the Steam version of it has VR support. And it's the game where you're in a spaceship and you fly around from planet to planet to planet and like, yo. I'll never be able to get a travel plan. I'm saying I'll never be able to have a ship. Yeah, that's the one. I'd be all about playing that shit in VR. Yeah, that's always what's excited me the most. Like, you hear, like, Zuckerberg talk about it and shit, and, like, you can shop in VR. Great, yeah, that's what the fuck. I want experiences I can't have IRL. Um, there is a... There was, rather, a series of Buddhist statues out in the middle of the desert. Area that came under ISIS control. These were massive statues, car carved relief style, into the side of a cliff. That had, like... In order to make them, they had tunnels going through them so you could walk through the inside of the statue to get up to the higher points of it. And ISIS took control of the area. No craven images, all that fun shit. They they dynamited the fucking statues. They don't... But they existed late enough that we have exact fucking measurements. Scale. We could recreate that shit in VR and then shit like that doesn't have to be lost. We can actually go see it as it was. You know what I'm saying? Similarly, like, the Pantheon... Still there, but it's not to its old glory because it's been stripped. But we know what it's supposed to look like for the most part. We could recreate that in VR and then people can fucking see what it was meant to be, you know? That's the shit about VR that excites me. You can work in VR! Oh, fucking great. Yeah, well, actually, that one, if I could drive my car in VR, I might be down for that, actually. Played a MMO in VR. It was actually a lot of fun. Like, got into a sword fight. Standing back here, I had my green screen set up. I was trying to, like, stream VR. I don't really have enough room in room for it, though. I had my beer sitting over here on the edge of my desk. I went to swing at somebody with a sword, and I, like, I went full fucking force into it and punched the shit out of my beer, like, right off the lip of the bottle. Battered my fucking beer, hurt the shit out of my finger. <laughs> I would have, like, there'd be sections where you're trying to climb the ladder, so you put your hand up and then you grip the palm button. You're actually climbing. I kept punching my fucking ceiling fan. <laughs> right, that was one of my favorite things in Assassin's Creed. I actually talked to an art history professor at Valencia and Nabang in Assassin's Creed. I was going around Rome climbing on the Arc, the Arc de Triomphe and shit like that. I was like, yo, this is dope. Because they were pretty fucking accurate with that shit. You can kind of get a good idea of the s scale and the artwork, you know. Again, that's what VR is made for. Experiences we can't have on our... Also, also just give artists tools and turn them loose. They can create, like, worlds. And, like, VR could be so much more than what's being used. But we live in a capitalist hellscape, and unless they can find a way to monetize it, they're not going to do it. Fuck the cash incentive, man. Burn the shit free. Where the fuck did this backpack fall? I should probably should have looked for landmarks while we were up there. I thought it would have been underneath this tree over here. Clearly that's Really? I love that. I love that they took that much time to get it right, knowing damn well that the vast majority of gamers just flat ass wouldn't give a fuck. Oh, okay. I'm dumb. I got a climbing rope! Yay! Certainly come in handy. I I loved Assassin's Creed One, mostly because I fucking hate Ezio and I loved Altair. But, uh, running through, like, Damask areas, I don't believe. Yeah, gaming can be used for so much cool shit. I'm saying, like, for utilized like a motherfucker.
I've seen with uh, Microsoft's HoloLens, which I don't believe has ever been truly released. I've seen like uh, them doing things with that, like showing med students a heart actually functioning so they can get more experience with it than they could with an actual human body. Like, there's some really cool shit you can do with this tech. I want my socialist utopia. Where's Star Trek? God damn it. That's not just because I'm an artist and I probably wouldn't work anymore and would just create shit. That's whatever. That not the only reason. Doesn't hurt. But like there's other reasons. Like for instance, I raise money for extra life for kids. Charitable organization that helps pay for medical care for kids to make sure they're getting the absolute pinnacle of the treatment they can get and make sure their families don't stress over bills. Something that I really feel like society, society should just fucking do. I don't feel like it should be left up to a charity to do that. That being said, I love Extra Life and I love going to Extra Life United. Our annual convention. Right! Oh you imagine, like, CSI? Instead of watching people solve the murder, it's you and your fucking friends in VR in your respective houses just fucking, like, analyzing the crime scene, walking around, gathering evidence, using fake phones to call each other, <laughs> compare notes, draw the DNA results in yet? <laughs> like, that shit would be fucking a blast! Oh my god, that'd be so much fun. That's what she said. I don't trust you to have, a, a, have the upper body strength to pull this off, buddy. I don't trust myself to have the upper body strength to pull this off, and I've been working at it. Why not? It's VR. We can do whatever we want. Yo, we can do a full VR build-up, and maybe we can figure out who the second shooter was in the grassy knoll. Ow. Why would you just drop, dumbass? I would have climbed back up, personally. Like, imagine all the potential for, like, VR horror. That alone makes the entire thing worthwhile. I would have. For all these douchebag right wingers, we could take them and throw them into a VR environment where they're actually in the concentration camp during the Holocaust. And if they still think it's a good idea, then uh, we can put them on a watch list. Search the ruins of the end. What's the horror angle? Yes, the assassination plot was not an assassination at all, but the alien brain worms had gotten to Kennedy and they were trying to exterminate them. Yes! Actually, I could write that into a decent story. <laughs> It's not a spy man, it's a thin man. Just leave him alone. He's kids or what the fuck it is thin man does. I would like I had an idea a while ago for a uh MMO FPS. But the entire game was PvE. PvE, no PvP component at all, and it was, uh, without getting too into the weeds on the detail, I actually wrote out a decent amount of the story. It was, a uh, robotic uprising, AI taking out humanity, where the player characters would have to work together, like, you could spend your downtime studying skills, like mechanics and whatnot, to get away faster, or, you know, certain people would just obviously focus on gun skills, because the gun plays all they care about, you have medics, 
and death was permadeath, but the idea was that humanity is on its last legs, so that's why there's no PvP. Everyone has to work together in order to survive. The idea being that you have to get together with people from disparate backgrounds within the communities in order to survive this robotic apocalypse. To try to give people, like, a virtual version of a common enemy to work against. To play through a massive, overarching narrative. Buy you a drink first. You're an easy boy. Eh. 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 Yeah, like, and even going further than that, like, want to work on your car, but you don't... You have a... Uh, you want to work on your car, but you don't necessarily have the background for it. With the AR tech, you plug into your car and, you know, shows you what's wrong, where that thing is located, how to replace it. You know what I'm saying? Like... There's so many things this tech could be used for. Uh, you're working on the wiring for your house and not only can the AR give you hey look at this area things like that but theoretically speaking heights, bro. I better be careful. this has nothing to do with being afraid of heights bro this is fucking ah! um theoretically a properly tuned camera with enough sensitivity could theoretically Tell if wires are live or not without you touching them. So not only is it helping guide you through the repair process, but it's like, yo, careful, don't don't fucking grab hold of that. That that uh that could suck. Maybe uh we don't grip it and rip it. Man. That part's pure speculation on my part. I've never heard of a camera that could sense electron flow, but it's theoretically possible. I gotta make my pennies! <laughs> I'll save the joke for when you come back. I farted. Even stinking too. Nasty fuck. I do love Apex. I don't know. I just waste. God damn! Seriously, that reeked. Woo! Jesus Christ. Oh, I think I'm sick. What the fuck? Oh, I'm making myself sick. Jesus. Oh, what am I eating? Which is funny, because like, I actually cook fresh meals most of my time. We had tortilla. All the kids are coming from different times. <laughs> it's like they know they're listening in! The call's coming from inside the house. Out the window. Oh, Jesus. Smell's not leaving either. It's just fucking sitting on me. Oh, God. Uh, I need to change my diet. Something's not right. Oof. Oof. Myself a little nauseous. Ugh. You're a listening device. Oh, maybe we can go up here? Why do you keep crouching, bro? Who is he? What did he hide here? He hid your mother! Or at least part of her. What's in the box? 
Bro, you suck at this. Fix your cryptography. I should have used the commercial break to go grab another beer. What is this place anyway? It makes me damn sick. Part of your property. How do I open it? Oh fuck! I, I can find something in this room. Damn it! You're back, and I had a joke. Okay, let's see. Let's re. Oh, hold on. I I gotta get them nickels, cause. Cause I'm making it hell, bitch. I don't regret that joke. I do regret the coins I'm going to pick up later, so Lexus and yell at me, but I don't regret the joke. Oh, there's a quarter. <laughs> and now I'm remembering uh, an episode of Chuck, where the Canadian kid was talking about making it hail. Got Canada dollar coins. Anyway. Oh, there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be made known. Oh, okay. Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light, and that which ye have spoken in the ear and closets shall be pro proclaimed upon the housetops. Uh, ooh, there's some on the back. That old witch. Have the locals fallen into superstition? Hope they did. Uh, state. I don't care. Uh, 1223? Maybe? Maybe that's our, our code? Oh, it's a little obvious. Well, two, three. I don't think that was it. What's the room? I think it's just that one. I get that so much about this game that makes like like this dude's using uh, diary entries from his ancestor from the past to bust cryptograms from modern day Russians. Makes no sense. Uh, the code for this dude's safe is going to be in the basement. Didn't have access to? Like, what the fuck? Also, another great thing for VR. I doubt it would cut down on all the motherfuckers in I-4 treating it like Fast and the Goddamn Furious, but... Fucking, like, race cars, VR. You know what I'm saying? Oh. You actually feel the... Ooh, especially if you need, like, a full-on setup, so you got the... Oh, like, the fucking engine vibrations and sh Oh, my God, I'm getting hard thinking. Anyway. It's another broken angel statue. I can't... This, this area's, like, locked away. We had to, like, rip through boards to get here. How the fuck would the cipher for his code be... Oh, well, you're a cock. <laughs> the fuck am I supposed to do with that? How the hell am I supposed to make anything out of that? Thank you, that was my thoughts exactly. Oh, it's... Each page is a different... The answer is not present. Is there, is there a number missing? We, uh, so I don't see a five. I that was honestly oh that's the second bit that was honestly what I felt like the Fast and the Furious ride at Universal should have been is a uh, a bunch of VR pods Okay, so like the way I envision it is it's a bunch of VR pods. They sell an at-home version of the game. 
And then, like, you come to the parks, and there's, you know, obviously the parents aren't going to want to participate. But, like, the kids can log in with their whatever ID it is from whatever service, and the car they're racing for at the, in the parks is their car from their at-home game. Fucking, yeah, they sit in the VR pod, and it's a full simulation of the actual street racing. And then they have announcers for the events and screens so their families can watch them race. I feel like that would be way better than what we actually have for the Fast and the Furious ride. And keep in mind, I love the Fast and Furious ride because it's like a shitty B-rated movie, and that's like my jam. But still. We even have 3D printers in the park so you can buy, like, a model of your car. Oh, shit, we're back to the past, the part of the game I'm enjoying. And the future. I don't like the way he treats. I don't like the way she treats him either. It's a bad relationship. I love it, but for all the wrong reasons. We went on that with my ex cousin in law and her husband. And first off, the queue line going through, like I was staring at the uh, rotors. And I was like, cool. I could see, like, you know, street racers having to replace the rotors on their car. Somewhat regularly because the the heat from the the braking system, but these are all truck rotors, like semi style. Like these aren't car rotors. What the fuck is this? But like we got on that ride and me and Lex, two seconds into the ride, started laughing because the terrible acting and the terrible plot, and we did not stop laughing until we pulled into the fucking end of it. We had a blast because of how shitty it was and how hilariously bad it was. Not what Universal wants. But we still enjoyed it very much. Oh, congrats! I've given up on tech. I don't know when they're hiring. I've started studying uh, IT through a Google program. I listen to videos at work and take tests at home on the computer. Try to get an IT degree so I can, you know, get somewhat of a... I honestly would prefer to entertain for a living. I am an entertainer! But, like, you know. That's a pipe dream. IT is something I can do. Be right back. I, uh, my, my cup runneth empty. It's Yangling. Yangling is cheap. And so am I. All right, I got my dizzy water. I'm happy. No, not necessarily. Just getting a job in IT. I don't really care where. It doesn't bother me. It's just something that would pay more and probably be more satisfying than delivering pizzas. Not that I'm... Like, I like delivering pizzas. I'm fine with it. It's just the pay is not there, you know? Room 207. What the fuck's he gonna do? You don't call the janitor until you get rid of the body. Don't try to get out. Just be careful. No one wants to talk to you about that. You're taking care of it. There he is. Looks like that missing fellow. The detective showed guests his daguerreotype. The fuck's a daguerreotype? You mean that nosy pop Walter Gilman? Holy mother of God. I have to tell the Dr. Sheriff. No, this man needs a doctor. Uh, I've seen wounds like this. It's only a matter of minutes. I'm sorry, sir. These voices, there are so many of them. Hey, Wraith, I think I've heard this conversation before. Yes. They said that a certain detective, Walter Green, worked for the judge. That he was interested in this individual for money, or else he might know something about my father's disappearance in Hawaii. Maybe at the reception I was speaking from that his room number. Also, Lex's CI, who 
why I like to call a CSI. Doesn't make sense, but it's still funny. You got her some lip balm. <laughs> it's like a congratulations, your shit's almost over gift. And uh, cup noodles lip balm. It does not taste anything like ramen. But it's very cute and I like it. No, yeah, I haven't even looked into pay rates for different places. I don't know. Maybe Bo pays decent for IT. If they do, then yeah, I wouldn't mind going back. I'll never go back to security. They can suck the fattest part of my ass. John Norton, father's former associate. Possible. Five ten, shorty. A crime from a decade ago. Getting lost. Memories. I have illusions. All fading into one. I want to see the judge. Someone has been looking for him. Walter Gilman. You're a Gilman. He was the janitor that owned the pet food reception of Bees in room two o seven. Everything in this fucking game is locked. Like, this is our family's inn. I own it. How the fuck don't I have keys for anything? I have a light source. It just has limited fuel supply, and I don't want to waste it. Our, our family hotel. Hey, buddy. You are not alone. That ghost is here with you. He's going to eat your face. You'll never leave this place. Because you are not alone. Matter if y'all think I'm not funny, I amuse myself. That's all the bloody matters, isn't it? More kerosene. Eh, eh, I just wanna knock shit over. My fucking hotel will wreck the place if I want to. It's my hotel and I'll break shit if I want to. Break shit if I want to. Break shit if I want to. You would break shit too. You are an ugly motherfucker. He's just hanging out. He's killing you. All good. Oh, it's a squatter with nowhere to live. I know that painting. I studied that in art history class. I don't know who painted it or when. I believe it's from the Renaissance. I know it's supposed to, predict, to depict Satan. I'm assuming he knows Jamie. He's got footy PJs. Okay, so we need to get there. Where are we? We're gonna put that on the map. No idea. Okay. Take map with us. Fucking lovely. Also, why are we only using one match per candle? These candles are close enough together. We can get to them with the same match. Look. Light all the candles. I want the shit to burn down. Already lit. Which honestly I feel should be causing our character a little more discomfort than it is. Hey, it's Outlast 2!
Letter from one of the guests. I can't, can't recall ever doing such a thing. Why would I disturb the guest? Well, I was well aware that if I did something like that, I would get locked up in the dark for days on end. Dear Mr. Hyde, my wife and I had hoped that the week we were to spend at your establishment would be as pleasant and soothing an experience as it was advertised in your brochures. Indeed, the forest provides a calming ambiance, and long walks and crisp mountain air are surely beneficial for the health. Unfortunately, this is all the praise I can offer, and I'm only writing it out of courtesy. Every single night, some deranged brat would haunt the hallways of the inn, running wildly, laughing hysterically, and repeat repeatedly knocking on our door. I tried to scold him multiple times, but he would always manage to run away from me or hide somewhere. Evident that he knew every nook and cranny of the place. The realization came only on the day of our departure when I saw him entering your office. That little bugger wasn't the child of your guests, left unsupervised to pester the other visitors. He was your son! You can't keep your own child in check and you allow him to ruin your guests' long-awaited vacation? You're surely not fit to run an inn. Rest assured that I will relate this outrageous story to all my acquaintances. I'm quite a well-known figure in Providence. And that my wife and I will give your inn a wide berth in the future. A.S. Abel. Well, he certainly wasn't able to make a joke. <laughs> it's my party. Oh, kerosene. That was the wrong button. I extinguished my torch. So if I gauge right, the door is too seven sheep. Rat? Rat. Damn this chain. Pick it. <laughs> Kick the tits off that door! Maybe I could use it to cut through the chain. There's a hole in the wall. What happened to your hotel, bro? Climb through the hole in the wall? No. Don't mind that squeaking noise, that's just the sound of a ghost closing the door so he can kill you later. Beepity beepity beep boo, I need kerosene! Oh, fuck you. Fine. Flies in the kerosene we are. Sometimes it blows my mind. Hanging donkeys all the time. Is it you? Or is it me? Search for things that you can't see. Going blind. Out of reach. Oh, hi, lady! Who's the demon lady? We've never seen her before. What was that? Where did it try to drag me? To hell, maybe? Christ, what have I done to you? Uh, the school of overacting? Fill the fuck out, Brosa. Oh, fine, fuck you. I gotta pee, but like... Up. Maybe it's helpful, I don't know. And yes, I heard the knocking, I just don't. Can't be locked from this side. I'm on the inside. Fucking lame is what it is. 
is fucking lame. Like there was fucking either. Why did the doors lock from the outside? What kind of fucking hotel is this? I was going somewhere with that, and I lost it partway through. Got more kerosene. Got more kerosene. Alright, so I, I, clearly we have to go through here to get out, but what do we have to do? Apparently, once I push this over, we can't lift it back again. So, uh, hopefully, we weren't supposed to do that window. If so, I've done fucked us. Well, these candles don't provide shit for light, huh? If I had a hammer. Oh. Here, I need some ashes. Hey, I just met you. This is crazy. I followed you home. Now have my babies. Oh, I see. Use this as a ramp and then we climb up. I got it. Clever girl. Oh. I don't think it looks like a slaughter. I think it looks like they exploded. A little weird. But like, look, people have medical conditions. I ain't gonna judge. All the other girls all made fun of me. They're six feet under. Now have my babies! Elpol, a magazine for psychiatric patients. A magazine created for the patients of a psychiatric hospital. In many such places, patients cannot even dream about such amenities. They get fed pig swill and tied to the beds. Many don't survive their stay, and the ones that do are never really free men again. It should be said a great luck to ever get out of such an institution. That's sadly pretty much how they were, yeah. It's locked. I said, I don't want to see what you stupid thing anyway, you pig. I don't give a fuck! Fuck you, bitch. 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 That is what happened to Kodo at the end of Beastmaster. I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, we're gonna go in here because, like, you know, that random face that jumped up to jump scare us, that's like. I mean, to be fair. Fair, it depends what that door chain was made out of, how old it was, what shape of condition it was in. So it could be as little as 15 minutes. 
hacksaws were not great. I gotta imagine they've only gotten better with time, which means the hacksaw this guy's using is fucking 800 and what. Probably kind of like a hope and a prayer. I'm saying, like, it could be like a copper chain. Like they would use copper, but like, 1800s might might be iron, which depending on the quality of the iron. What if it's a gold chain? Fourth slave. I spent most of his life here and worked his way up and still wouldn't know his job. But now I return to him. My what? guests. And what I can see, I should. Oh, the janitor's soul still here. Fuck. If he is, you owe him a paycheck. Like you do, still own this place. Works for you. Fucked up. Give him like the afterlife off. I'm just saying, bitch is dead. I did. I yeah, it's true though. I didn't think about that. The fact that chains move, so as the fucking hacksaws going over them, they would bounce and move and rattle, which would make it hard to get a bite. Basically, you have to open the door, then push it and hold it as tight as you could in order to maintain. And you're you're bound to slip. You can't actually hold the chain in place. So yeah, bitchy bitch. Canada's notes. Open the door for tension. Yeah, there, that would work better in your hand on it. Not much, but a little. Quick to drinking to keep himself sane. Great, I might. That's what I do. Uh, I'm afraid I might end up like him if those ghosts don't leave me alone. Mr. Jacob keeps telling me to lay off the bottle. He says that I'm seeing things, but I swear that it's all real. Because I'm afraid. Something lurks in these forests. I've heard some inhuman screams. Howling in the cave. I've seen claw marks on the barn. Jacob says, how you Get away the guests. What if they should be afraid? How many people have gone to the forest and never come back? My god, I can hear this howling again. I won't find any rest tonight if I don't take a swig or two or three or five. Nah, yeah, he's fine. Uh, wing B 106. Can we access room 106 in the hallway leading the second way of. Yo, ghosts! Don't fuck with me, man. Honestly, he's not looking bad for a dead man. Pretty sure it's a coffee grinder. Hey, I just met you. It's crazy. I followed you home. Now have my babies. I used to sing a different version of that, but it was it was insane. I changed. I'll R word you maybe, and it's like yeah, a little bit, a bit much. What's happening with which song? What? Oh, it's supposed to be a creepy stalker. I followed you home. Basically, those weird ass incels who will do weird shit like following women around and then assuming that means they love them. They should, you know. 
because fucking dudes are freaks. Dudes are freaks! Oh yeah. But again, we're talking about a world in which that guy's wife is leaving him for being an emotionally abusive piece of shit. And his response is to bemoan the fact that Texas allows women to divorce their husbands because they're not happy. How that should work. Property doesn't shit like that. Really gotten along well with. I've often thought if I was born closer to this generation, I probably would have identified as fucking non binary. But I'm old and just don't give a fuck, so. Oh. T to wing A can be used to open wing A! What about Gundam Wing? I love Gundam Wing! I know, it's most Gundam fans. Not their least favorite, that's G Gundam. You know, racist Gundam. But a lot of people don't like Wing that much. I love Wing. I'm not gonna lie, though, it's mainly for the altistry. I love the alt of those Gundams. I actually got a model of Epion there that Lexi on me for Christmas. Lexi. Fucking love me some Epian. It's a ghost. What? It's not like a ghost. I know. Do not open. Dead inside. But, you know, in terms of that song, comedy as well as horror is about pointing out the absurdity of shit that you don't believe in, right? So like, you write a goofy ass song that's about some stalker, like, I followed you home, now you love me, right? <laughs> and like, the absurdity of that moment might point out to some of these douchebags how stupid what they're doing is, but probably not, because, you know, they're idiots. That fucking weirdo wanted to blow me up! I managed to subdue the bastard and lock him up in one of the rooms. May God watch over you if you ever need to enter the B-Wing. Combination of the padlock is ANGER! Feel that. Cool. All right. So, uh, oh wait, can we push this down the stairs? I want to push this down. Hopefully, that mask dude's down there. This thing will fall on him and kill him, and I can steal his mask because his mask is sexy, and I want it. Also, I love when the Candyman remake came out, and all these idiots were like, "God, when did Candyman go woke?" You haven't seen the first movie, huh? You know that the entire point of horror is basically just be woke, right? Like, kind of, kind of what that genre is about. Angie, here she has some form of list. All right, let's go see the zombies. Like someone made a fort. Grab the goddamn kerosene, you douche nozzle. Also, speaking of woke horror, I love that, uh... Kanto and Nightmare on Elm Street are basically about the same subject matter. Tickles me to no fucking end. How am I supposed to move you? Nothing in you. I don't know where yet. I'm sure it'll come up. Oh, I see. Nightmare on Elm Street and the Disney movie Encanto basically deal with the same subject matter. Fun trivia fact to point out to your friends. Christ, that madman not only stole a Union soldier's uniform and murdered three innocent people, but also planned an assassination of the president! Thankfully, it's dead now, but who might have killed him? Gone. Everything went as planned. Yes, my dearest brother, we have reached the finale of our masterpiece. I have managed to procure a uniform from a Union soldier and get all the way to the northern reaches of Massachusetts. On my way, I have slaughtered three traitors of our sweet land, those... Inward-loving bastards that spit on our flag. 
I must have got lost in local woods, though, and instead of Lowell, I found myself in some backwoods. Thankfully, God has guided me to find an abandoned inn where I'm making final preparations while saying my prayers. So what that means? Yes, God is on our side, brother. He too wants our work to come to fruition, so the days of Abraham Lincoln as cursed followers are no. I hope you have been safely to Montreal. I trust God protects you the way he protects me. God bless the Confederacy. God bless Jefferson Davis. James W. Uh, well. I take the scissors. I want the scissors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So. We're getting into this. It's going to go a little bit. So. If you think about it. I mean, you don't have to think about it with Encanto. They're pretty straightforward with their synopses. Uh, the point of Encanto is about a generational trauma and how it can explain. I pause? Uh, the point of. Uh... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Never mind. I got gotcha. you. Uh, the point of Encanto is generational trauma and how it can affect a family. So Alma went through all that horrible shit with Pedro and losing the love of her life. I watched him get hacked down with a machete, and that trauma that she carried forward went on to affect her family and her children and everything else in her life until she can move forward from that trauma and allow her family to heal from it. Now, compare that to Nightmare on Elm Street. If you go back to Nightmare on Elm Street, you have Freddy Krueger, who, let's, let's ignore the fact that clearly the writers have no idea how law enforcement fucking works, irrelevant. You had this individual who was molesting and murdering small children, so the town got together and, when the law failed them, burned his house down with him inside of it, immolating him. You don't get to pull something like that without having a deep psychological toll on you, but at the same time, especially considering one of them was a cop, they all agreed to never speak of it again. So they carried that trauma forward with them and went down into their children, which is why we have Freddy coming back 16 years later when their children are becoming older and we would start to see the symptoms of psychological trauma progressing through the generations into their children. Thus, the ghost of Freddy comes back to haunt the children of the individuals who killed Freddy. So both series are dealing directly with psychological trauma and how it progresses through generations of families. So, when you look at it a specific way, both Encanto and Nightmare on Elm Street have the exact same subject matter, generational trauma, and how it affects those who come after us. <laughs> main reason I paused was because I'm terrible at losing my train of thought if anything happens in games so I wanted to be able to get it out without <laughs> I can will and did <laughs> yeah yeah it's just a theory I have feel free to disagree because I've never heard anyone else make that point But I feel like it holds up. <laughs> I didn't say they're the same. I said they deal with the same subject matter. <laughs> it's more fun to leave it hang, though, because then people get, wait, 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 what the fuck you talking about? For the record, though, I do love Encanto very much. Uh, ever since the, the passing of my son, I've gotten, like, emotional for certain scenes in movies. Like, I got home from work today, and my son was watching No Way Home. That scene where Andrew Garfield saves MJ to beautifully book in the moment in his movie where he couldn't save Gwen and he starts crying. Dude, that gets me every fucking time. Similarly, there are several scenes of Encanto, precisely the moment at the very end where Mirabel, like, you're the real gift kid, let us in. Like, that shit gets me every goddamn time. That is so... Well, and I feel like uh, Encanto definitely deals with the subject matter a little better than Freddy, especially if you're trying to include these sequels. Freddy's a little bit ham-fisted with their metaphor, but also at the same time not really treating it with the deference it deserves. What, oh, which scene are we... Damn roots again. They seem too tough for me just to break them. Spider-Man or Encanto? Because both, both those scenes are just... knows originally it was it was never confirmed that he 
had molested the children, just that he'd killed them. But, like, they did a TV series that then went back and retconned that and basically said, no, flat ass, he molested them. And it's like, he, we, we didn't need that, though. Oh, hey, the, the dead guy got moved. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we saw that in theaters and... Oh, he did get up and walk away. Look at that. Oh, he's got a bomb. Oh, Yank, you're a bastard. I mean, really? But he's already dead, right? Like, what the fuck's he gonna do to him? How long is this fuse? Shove it in his pants! Oh, I guess that works too. Kaboom! Yay, giant scissors! <coughs> That's Lex, my wife. That's her favorite song, The Under Pressure. Yeah, yeah, that scene from Spider, like, when fucking Andrew's, like, he catches MJ, and he's like, are you okay? And she's like, yeah, and then he starts crying. She's like, are you okay? I was like, he's great! <laughs> he can finally move forward! <laughs> he's making his first steps. I'm so happy for him. <laughs> like, yeah, because that, that shit... Wynn's death hit me hard, and, like, I saw it coming like a motherfucker, obviously, because it's in the comics, but still, like, Jesus. Oh, God. I have not. I like a lot of the songs from Encanto. I will say my, my personal favorite is, uh, Isabella's song. I hate Isabella as a character. I'm not even a big fan of her song. But Mirabel's line in that song is just because they did a really cool... Yeah, he does. Oh, my God, the dude's got so much. But this is the first step. This is going to really help. If he remembers it after the end of the movie. Well, technically, he only forgot Peter. Anyway. <laughs> so. During Isabel, Isabella's song, the part I love about it is when Mirabel is starting to, like, come around to seeing her sister for who she is, she starts singing the, you, fuck. Fuck, I can't remember the lyrics. You just seem like your life's been a dream. The melody there is the melody that Isabella sings during the Bruno song when she's still pretending to be someone else. But then as Mirabel continues to sing and talking about how she's opening her eyes and everything, she switches to the melody from Isabella's song. And I love that kind of musical storytelling where it's like, this is Mirabel compartmentalizing what she thought about her sister with what she now sees her sister for who she is. I love that little lilt. It just... It's one of the most beautiful parts of any of the songs in the movie to me because of how well it illustrates what the character is going through, just through music. I might, I'm as a singer, I might be biased, but oh, I know. Oh my God, Lin, Man Lin Manuel Miranda is a fucking genius. I think. I think he would remember fighting with uh, Tom Holland Spider-Man. I just don't think he would remember Tom Holland. I don't think he would have remembered any of the things with Tom Holland having the mask off. They so might be like, oh, there was another Peter Parker, and then there was another Spider-Man who may or may not be one of us. Oh. I think that's how the spell is supposed to work, but it's not exactly clear. I would like them to continue, and they both said they're up for it. I would like them to continue both the... Uh, Toby Maguire and uh, Andrew Garfield Spider-Man, because I would like to see how well their experiment with helping these individuals work. Because it also means theoretically that Harry Osborn might still be alive in uh, what's this fuck's world? Because if his father lived through being Green Goblin and got cured and didn't die, then that would mean Harry would probably have never taken the superhero serum or Green Goblin serum. And thus, he would have never become Green Goblin, which would not have led to his death. But that also means the events with Sandman and Venom would have played out differently, and would Toby have survived that? You were supposed to check every possibility, Norton. You're Any virus? Judge, and you should know how to bend the law without breaking it. The contract states you can both hand over your shares. 
without each other's consent. I'm sorry, Lord, but you signed it yourself. I never thought that bastard would try to outwit me, and that his demented spawn would sneak into the mine. What do you expect? The brat cannot inherit. We have to persuade that old fart somehow, or we'll end up with nothing. Ugh. I'm making new farts. The old farts just won't cut it. You gotta make new ones periodically, you know what I'm saying? Like, anyway. A hurricane of Hakaranya. God damn it, that song stuck in my head. Fuck, brain, let it go. Ooh, a bunch of keys. 107 and 208. Exactly. You just gotta constantly update your poots. You can't let the old ones sit there, they go stale. Those are potency. A hurricane of Akaranya. Also, I missed until I was older and reading shit. I missed the Texas Chainsaw Massacres and it fruit critical indictment of the fucking meatpacking industry. And again, I was really young when I watched it and was horrified and like, horrified enough that I've not wanted to watch this. I've watched a lot of the sequels, including the one with Matthew McConaughey and oh my god, was that a shit fest. Wednesday, September 13th, 1854. Blackstone, New Hampshire, Monday, September 11th. The sheriff issued an arrest warrant for Jacob Hyde, a mine and inn owner. Hyde is accused of murdering Judge John Norton, who Badly wounded, passed away upon arrival at the A five hundred dollar reward is being offered. Oh, it's lots of candles! Wanna light them all? Gotta light them all, gotta light them all, yeah. Well, Charmander. Charmander's my boy. I love Charmander because he starts off so cute and sweet, then he turns into Charmeleon, which is awkward teenage years, before becoming an adult badass in Charizard. What? Yeah, it's yours. Okay. Guess what? You never can ward. <laughs> A hurricane of Akaranya. It's not an amazing movie, but it's fun. It's like the, uh... It's like the kaiju... <laughs> What's well, not yours? It's like the kaiju equivalent of Fast and the Furious, right? Like, Fast and the Furious films... I, I had a kid almost start a fist fight with me over this when we had the e shop, too. The Fast and the Furious films are not fucking good movies. They are not good cinema. They're stupid, and they're a little fun to watch. Okay, like, the first one and the third one. The rest of the series can fucking burn. But, like... <laughs> Even the first and the third one, which are the good ones, are not good movies. They're just fun. I view fucking Pacific Rim the same way. Like, they're not good films. They don't even make good sense at in their own internal logic, but they are fun to watch. Like, for instance, the 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 old dude The old dude is fucking dying because much. It's all about family. <laughs> Why are you trying to do Sylvester Stallone? I don't understand. Anyway, the old dude's dying because his partner left and he had to operate the kaiju killer by himself. I forget what the fuck they call him, and honestly, it doesn't fucking matter. But he had to operate it by himself, which somehow means radiation poured into the passenger compartment, which makes no fucking sense, because then it wouldn't have been pouring in when there were two people there. Whatever, it doesn't fucking matter. Their, ex their explanation is that because he was there by himself, that's why he got irradiated. But then our protagonist and the new generation is in the fucking thing by himself after his brother gets ripped out, and he's fucking fine. So what the fuck, movie? Make some goddamn sense. <laughs> they put Syl Sylvester's that age, man. If they put him in it, he's gonna be driving a NOS-fueled fucking mobile scooter like my old people. 
Which I gotta be honest, I would watch that movie. Hey, it's all about family, Adrian, yo, hey! Henry seems like a typical melancholic, but I wouldn't jump to conclusions and say that he must have committed suicide. Too many people have gone missing in these parts! And certainly not all of them were overly sensitive. I've already written multiple times, but I have never received a reply, so I'm asking again. Do you really not remember my brother Henry who stayed at your inn two months ago? Thirty-one years old, tall, slim, and wears glasses. He came to your establishment seeking some peace and quiet after a recent breakdown. As a young artist, he was planning to paint landscapes. He's always loved the serene atmosphere of this region and said that these mountains and forests struck the right chord. As I mentioned in my previous letters, my brother never returned home. Axstone was the last place he was seen. I cannot dismiss the possibility that he may have taken his own life as it was full of suffering. But I hope this is not the case. Maybe you can recall some detail that would help me solve the mystery of Henry's disappearance. All sincerely, Anthony Wilcox. I, dude, ever since fucking Hellboy, I love Ron Perlman. Uh, like, Hellboy, Golden Army, both movies were fucking baller as shit, and I wish to God they'd continue that series. Although I will say, I've not seen the remake, but because I love fucking Hopper, I, I kind of want to see it. I feel like... I feel like Ron Perlman is a... Uh oh. Hi, lady! You pregnant? Or she just have a weird pubic region? And we can't shoot her, so we should run. Hold on, we'll get back to the conversation in a minute. I gotta run away! Run away! Oh, what a world! What a world! Whoa! Whoa, ball sweat! <laughs> Big, drippy ball sweat! Oh, shit! We just got hit with a pickaxe, y'all! Oh, goddamn! Oh, shit! We gotta get the fuck out of here, y'all! Oh, let's, uh, let's pull this down. That'll protect us a little bit. Oh, Teddy Fox! Ho <laughs> ho! God damn, y'all! Shit just got fucking real! I don't know why I'm doing Mickey. Madeline, who could who could could that be? Was she a guest at the end? Did she forget to pick her necklace from her room? Madeline! 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 Oh, someone. Are those diamonds? They must have cost a fortune. Jacob, who was he? Was it my father? Oh, one of the guests. If it was my father, that would make Madeline his. I don't want to picture that. No, no one wants to think about their pictures boning, their parents boning down. Those aren't diamonds. We'll take them. Fine. I'm a pawn them. I feel like it's time, y'all. I feel like it's time. Time for a little bit of redneck recycling. That means to let a little out and take a little in. In other words, I'm gonna go to the bathroom and replace my beer. I will be right back. Oh, Ron Perlman, though. I feel like Ron Perlman is like, in some people's minds at least, uh, a version of the actor that played Green Goblin. They have similar characteristics. But Ron Perlman's definitely superior. I'm sorry. I, lo I love that actor. I especially loved him in uh, Odd Thomas. If you've seen that movie, that movie is fucking baller. If you haven't seen it, I totally recommend checking it out. It's not Ron Perlman. It's the guy that played Green Goblin, whose name is totally fucking blanking on me right now. But yeah, Ron Perlman's a fucking baller. I love Ron Perlman. All right, I'll be right back. I got to tap out. Tap out so I can mute. Right, I'll be right back.
Mm, boom, boom. Oh, <coughs> oh yeah. Mm, boom, boom. Too evil. I don't know why I'm having so much trouble with that, like, inhale deep voice thing lately. Really gotta... I guess because I don't use it very often, because really, why the fuck would you need to? Mm, boom, boom. Oh. Wow, see, that was terrible. <coughs> oh. Yeah. Mm, boom, boom. <laughs> oh, am I still? Yeah, I'm rolling over coins. So yeah, I need to pick those up. I'm making it hail, baby. Lex is gonna come home and be like, yo, why the fuck are this change all over the bedroom floor? Cause I was thinking of hail! And then she's just gonna shake her head at me, because she knows me well enough to question it past that point. I'm sorry, knows me well enough not to question me past that point. Lex gets mildly irritated with me because I make all these in jokes and she's like, I'll make them around her family, and she'll be like, you know no one gets that but me, right? And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine with it. I make jokes that even you don't get. I'm literally the only person in the room that fucking gets it. I'm still fine with it. I don't give a shit. My goal in life is to amuse myself. If you happen to come along for the ride, then kudos. If not, eh, you know, shit happens. Also, I mentioned earlier, I just finished reading the... Fuck. Never ending story. Yeah, I, I just finished reading The Promised Neverland, a manga title that is a great deal of fun. Uh, I recommend it. Also, I recommend the Shonen Jump app. You can download it from Android or Apple Play Store, and they've upgraded their prices recently, but it's still only $2.99 a month to read all the manga you want. If you're reading a title like uh, My Hero Academia that is currently still being released in Japan, you can read it like... Usually the translation comes the day after it's released. <laughs> Yo, when fucking... Ah, oh, I forgot his name again. Something tax. When Atreyu's horse dies. Jesus Christ. What the fuck? All I will say, the most traumatized... Hands down. Hands down. The most traumatizing fucking film that should never be shown to kids. And yet was shown to every fucking child in the 80s. Watership down. What the fuck are you trying to give children deep-seated psychological issues for the rest of their goddamn lives? What the fuck was that movie? I, I know, I know, I know, I know. It's a metaphor for the fucking Holocaust. It's, you know, this is the horrors that the Jews went through. I get it. I understand it. Fuck you. <laughs> that movie was so fucking awful. Not awful, it's a good film, but Jesus Christ, it's traumatizing. What the fuck? Sorry, I had to get that off my chest. <laughs> no, I enjoy Promise Neverland. I'm kind of torn on, uh... Like, the beginning of the series, before they escape the house. I like better than large chunks of the rest of it. I feel like it lost a little bit after that point. Uh, it regained it in certain areas. I really love the... In the manga, I don't know if they did it in the anime. I've never seen the anime at all. I love in the manga, they do uh, three or four chapters that are just... Like, one of them is a, here's what happened after the story, and then the other three are, here's what happened during the story from other perspectives. You get to see Crone and her time before she became... Um, a sister. We get to see Mother and what she was up to after the kids escaped, and one other that I can't remember. They were all really well done. But there was some, there was, uh, there was a lot of shit in the 80s just pushed out, like, we don't have to try. It's for There was also some really good and really deep Speaking of, Transformers. Transformers the movie. When they killed Daddy Optimus, because he was a surrogate father for a lot of 80s kids, and what the fuck? 
Anyway. Soon before the accident with the mine, the relations between my father and his associate became very strange. George was irritable because of the stagnation in their business, and for some reason he seemed to blame everything on my father. Or me. I might have been an insufferable brat, I can't deny that, but he kept calling me a lunatic and saw my innocent pastimes as deranged. Oh. Is it possible that he brought a psychi psychiatrist all the way here just to get rid of me? He was just about some other boy. Oh, British Terabithy was really sad. Harley me, fuck. Yeah, that, I bawled. I bawled like a baby. I, I never, I didn't interact with the book at all. I, I watched the movie. And got extremely mad at my ex-wife for making me rent it. I like seriously mad. Like, the fuck? Why would you make me watch that? I like animals more than I like people. I don't know where my dog is. I hear something. My dog's old as I girl. Deeply sad. He can't see without his glasses. There was some weird ass TV show I watched that I hear had a happy ending, but like the, the channel I was watching it on quit carrying it before the ending. But it was a a kid that went into a coma and in his coma he was having this dream life where he's going through and having these adventures. Meanwhile we keep flipping to the real world where his mom's like trying to exercise him to prevent as much atrophy as possible and we're seeing her life and it's just deep depressing to see her side of things. Uncool game. Cool. I'm trying to fucking walk here. Fuck. I don't think it was erased. I, I, I managed to find it a while ago. Not it, but like a wiki article that went over the character's story arcs. And so I got to get some closure on it, but like... The fuck, game? No, it was, uh, it was a live action. But yeah, it was a live action show from like the mid 90s, I want to I don't know. I forgot that's what we were here for, to be honest with you. It's been a while. Check. You can check out anytime you'd like, but you can never leave. Let's look it up. 90s show. Kid. Oh my. Odyssey, that might have been it. Old boy who stubbornly clings to the belief he's dead. Father faked his death. Well, it's popping up. Probably it. I love that song. Welcome to the Hotel California. What a lovely place. What a lovely face. I must find out how much game I need. Living it up at the Hotel California. Yeah, I saw that. Fuck you. I'm gonna be all spoopy. Eh. Eh. I can't push it. It's too heavy. Well, then you should probably put out your lantern. In 202, I can easily get to number two. I need to know how much he's got. I need to know!
I'm trying to figure out where I am on this map. But I think this is gonna be room 203 and we need to get there. Oh well shit. Stop crouching dipshit. Oh god he got me! Ah! Oh, he brains me! Oh my insides have become my outsides! Oh my god! Oh what a world! What a world! Yes, F, he F me up, you are correct. Yeah, so I guess it's the Odyssey? I don't... Wikipedia art. Canadian produced? Ooh, God. I love Kids in the Hall and I still talk shit about Canadian. Also, Kids in the Hall are back. They're on Amazon Prime. So you can watch them the Amazon Prime. I also give a free subscription. Also, you can get this game for free on Amazon Prime right now. Uh, there should be a link. But, uh... Kids in the Hall are back. They're on Amazon Prime. They've done a brand new uh, fucking season. As well as they have almost all the old seasons. I don't think they have brain candy on there. Which... Very odd. Very odd movie. One of the episodes of Kids in the Hall, you get to see two grown-ass men. And by grown-ass men, I mean like they're in their 80s now. You get to see them butt-ass naked jumping up and down. Full frontal, it's very fucking funny. I peed a little, honestly. <laughs> oh, these aren't the guys we're looking for. The guys we're looking for wearing clothes. I want to say they're in their 60s. 70s. I love the kids in the hall. They're one of my absolute all-time favorite. Oh shit. I did it again, y'all. They're one of my all-time favorites. I find them absolutely hysterical. My favorite, you can look it up on YouTube right now on your phones. Look up kids in the hall zombie sketch. I think I'm supposed to go that. I think I'm supposed to wait till he's go looking the other way. Although that doesn't give us a whole fucking good ton of time. Now though, we'll, we'll, we'll look around. It's like that way. Seems like the only way to go. And according to that map down there, this door should be two hundred three. We're trying to get to room 202 in order to... In order to try to cross over. There we go. Suck a bag of dicks, bitch bag! Side note, bitch bag was my uh, pet name for my ex-wife. One point in time, she was like, "What? What's a bitch? A big old bag of bitch." We did not have the best relationship. It was a bad scene. Anyway, Uh, maybe we can go out through here? Hell yeah, we can't. Oh. Dude, don't slam it. Just open it normally like a fucking human. What the hell's wrong with you? Glass Unicorn, by the way. I know I've seen it. I don't remember it. I should rewatch it. I've been thinking about setting aside a night. Finding shit on Prime to do watch parties with. But I, honest to God, I haven't gotten around to even looking at Prime to see what's there. 
I do too, honestly. Gilman, open the door. We need to talk, just you and me. Greetings, Mr. Hyde. Such a pleasant face. I know you too. I don't really know why you're so upset. I really... You aren't the only hack who thought he could sniff out a scoop. But I'm not looking for a scoop. I just want to sort this out. There's something unsettling going on in this charming little corner of the world. So many people have gone missing, including your friend, Judge John Norton. I want to find him. Please, that's my sole motivation. You can shove him up your ass. You want to prove I'm responsible for his vanishing, but you're just desperate to make a good story. Do some research. The word publicity sounds strange coming from someone specializing in sweeping things under the rug. Two years have passed since the incident in the mine, and many things still remain unclear. People lost their lives. Many others have gone missing since, and you act like it was just a minor incident. It was an accident. A tragic accident that cost the lives of my employees and ruined my business. That's all. Oh, I'm afraid that's not all. Ever since then, people have gone missing in the area. Many people, even guests of this establishment. Enough! I want you out of my inn by tomorrow. You will hear it. There was a... I have left something here. I, I watched a, like a documentary that involved Rankin Bass at some point in time. I'm having trouble remembering what the fuck it was I watched about. Like, they, they went over a lot of the Rankin Bass shit. Of their catalog and whatnot. I hate stories like that, though, where the artist gets fucked over. Part of the reason why I hate Walt Disney is like he's famous for that shit. Like stealing other people's characters because they didn't bother to copyright them and stealing their technologies because they didn't copyright them. Then again, Walt Disney was a massive capitalist and I'm a communist! A little bit of cooking. Atari in the early days as well, too. Atari was basically just like cocaine fueled orgies that happened to make video games on occasion. During his investigation on the missing judge, the detective discovered that people had been disappearing for a long time in these parts ever since the ex explosion at the mine. He began to suspect that the person to blame might be my father, Jacob Hyde. He even visited the mine to look for. And that was that was actually using Lex's uh cup noodles lip balm. I got super chapped lips that chap really easily, and like, this shit amuses me. There's been a lot of documentaries on Atari. Oh yeah, Disney. Disney did some really horrible shit in its time. Uh, there was a. Fuck, I can't. There was a. Uh animator that was coming up at the same time as Disney and he came up with characters like Popeye and uh, a lot of the more lewd characters that are technically part of the Disney catalog now. He came up with them but he didn't believe in copyrights and Disney abused that to steal all the copyrights from him. Also that, that thing Disney does where they have the rotating drum behind their images so they can film the moving backgrounds easier. That was this guy's and Disney copyrighted it and then told him he couldn't use it. Like, Walt Disney was an asshole. He was a horrible human being. I don't know where you get it, honestly. Hey, buddy. Oh, you want to get in bed? Bed? Yeah, so Lex has been working with a Lex has been working with a CI. Well, I like to call her CSI. I think that make fun. But she's going for her degree and physical therapy assistance. I need to thoroughly search this. Be a physical therapist is a doctorate, and we can afford that. But uh, her so her CSI since she's finishing up her term with her got her like a little gift bag with random different shit, and the cup noodles lip balm was one of the things in there. It's it's fucking adorable. Not tastes like soup. It has a delightful mint tingle to it, which kind of makes me want to make mint flavored noodles. I don't know why. 
like just ground up some fresh peppermint, like a garlicky peppermint. Eddie would probably be terrible, but I really want to try it anyway. Yeah, that's my pup. That's Haku. Haku turns 15 this year. He's older than dirt. He has no teeth. He's blind as a bat, but he is fucking adorable, and I love him. He's my soul pup. <laughs> Found it! <laughs> it is it is super cute though, right? It's super oh that, that yep, there we go. It is super cute. It even has like a little poofy squeezy top. Like it's you know the little jelly squeezy stuff. That looks like noodles. Yeah, amusingly one of my daughter's friends did a sleepover the other day and apparently she didn't at Haku because she was Nervous that he might bite. I was like, I, I mean, if he did, it wouldn't hurt. <laughs> Nothing there. Like, basically, we'd just be gumming you. Like, he doesn't bite. He's never bitten. Very, he's a very chill, sweet pup. And he also has very low self esteem. So he'd be more afraid that you might be mad at him if he tried to bite you. Lexus rolled over in her sleep and had her, uh, I go over him, and he doesn't move because he's afraid. Like he just laid there, and then he started whining because he wanted to get free, but he was a, he didn't want to upset her. <laughs> I love my dog. He's kind of he's kind of a wuss, but the disappearance started right after the accident. Yeah, it's a neighbor. Bumps, caves, and whatnot. But I don't believe that it's all. Cool. I also find it hard to believe that the explosion was. So Jacob's version was by the investigating officer. One of the locals told me that right before the I'd had brought several. I'm going to go to the mine. Back forever. I'd would have. The sheriff might have overlooked some. Or. I. Maybe that will shed some light. Yeah. I love my dog. My bestie. Nobody knows if he ever came back. Also, I've been with. That was one of the saddest fucking episodes. I guess I'll have to go down to the mine. Uh, that was so. But yeah, my, my ex. I was. I've been with Lex for I want to say twelve years and no. But before that, I spent ten years with an emotionally and physically abusive woman who treated me like dog poo. And it was nice to have one around who loved me unconditionally and like to him the sun shone out of my asshole. He did a lot for me. I'm a pup. I'm very sad by the fact that this is likely his last year on earth. This breed lives to be on average about fifteen years old. He's rubbing up right against that. I think he turns 15 this December. But he's been my bubby and my absolute best friend for... Damn near that entire... He was almost a year old when I got him. Damn near that entire time. He's my bestie. Also, he's a very deep sleeper and a very shallow breather, so, like, with as old as he is. Like, right now, he's laying in bed looking around. But here in a little bit, he'll pass out, and he sleeps so deep and breathes so shallowly that I'll periodically just stare at his hips. I'm just waiting. <laughs> please, 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 please. And then he sighs real deep, and I'm like, oh, thank God. Oh, you motherfucker, quit worrying me. Not. 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 
I must have lost my mind. Oh, do not open. Okay, this is the door we came through. Dude, I'm not, like, seriously, like, that motherfucker, when he is out, you can stare at him for, like, a good three minutes and not see a single breath, and, like, on the one hand, I don't want to be like, Haku! Haku! It's like he's sleeping, right? I don't want to fuck with him, but on the other hand, I'm like, please, God, breathe! Just let me know you're alright! I do not, when his time comes, I do not feel I'm going to respond well to it at all. Oh, well clearly we follow the blood smear, that's, oh, okay. Yeah, his, his breed is Bichon Frise. Little French floofy white dogs that have hair and not fur, so they're hypoallergenic, they're extremely good-natured, and they love to make people laugh and smile, so they, they were, like, only in my head. bred to be, like, show dogs and do, like, circus shows and the bouncing on the hind legs and all the fun stuff. But my mom had gotten a Bichon, who me and that dog did not get along until I shattered my kneecap. At the same time I shattered my kneecap and I had that big blue foam rubber fucker wrapped around my leg. Her dog had been born with, uh, their kneecap is supposed to have a groove in it that a tendon rests in. He was born without that groove, so he'd slipped a tendon at the same time, so he had to have surgery to have that groove shaved into his kneecap. So me and him were walking around with leg braces at the same time, and even though we hated each other up until that point, we bonded over that experience. And then sadly, he developed prostate cancer and passed away. And it was after he passed that Shortly after he passed it, I found Haku, got him, and like now I'm just, I'm sold on Bashans. Like Lex wants to later get a, we, we both agreed we're not getting another dog with Haku alive because all of it, kind of an isolated dog and doesn't necessarily like high energy things that puppies would be. But Lex desperately wants a French Bulldog, I just want more Bashans. I love my boy. Yo, that's... Okay. So, LB, my mom's old Bashan, he used to sleep on his back, paws in the air with his tongue hanging out the side of his mouth. I scared the shit out of my mom several times. She thought he just flat-ass died in the middle of the night. He's like, ah. And so, when B passed, I started looking for a new dog for my mom, which realized later on that that was my way of grieving but like I walked in this dog store and they had one Bashan in the store and it was Haku and when I first went over and looked at him he was laying like a normal dog and the other puppies were bouncing on his back and he was ignoring them and so I picked him up looked she wanted a female because B passed away from prostate cancer and she figured well eliminate the prostate get rid of the problem so I put B back down in the pen or I put Haku back down in the pen went around the rest of the store there was no other Bashans there and so I go to see Haku once more before I leave and he was laying on his back with his fucking tongue in his mouth, and I was like, My boy! <laughs> also, that's why he's neutered. We were kind of planning on breeding them, but he kept sleeping on his back with his balls on full display, and the kids were asking un uncomfortable questions. Also, we decided that breeding would probably lower Belle, my mom's new dog's lifespan, and... Um, make a money making opportunity I'm saying they're they're family members to us and then Bell started humping Haku's face so it probably wouldn't have worked out to breed him anyway seriously she would put her front paws behind his ears and start boning his face like dude stop that's masculate my buddy for and he's he's so easy going that like if I go to bathe him He'll try to get out of the sink two or three times, and then he's a fatalist, and he'll be like, yeah, fuck it. Whatever, get it done. What you gotta do? And so, like, he would start boning his face, and he'd be like, ah, whatever. He would just lay there and fucking take it. God damn it, Haku, spit up for yourself. What are you doing? I'm going mad. I love Belle too, but like, I, I don't live with my mom. She's like, 
grown distance, so like she'll come over and I'll dog sit her for my mom, and she just like basically ignores the shit out of me and just hangs out by the front door waiting for my parents to get back. Mostly because my dad feeds her human food. So apparently I'm not fucking good enough for her anymore. Shit bird. I thought me and her were cool, but you know, whatever. Run away! Run away! Oh yeah, that'll stop him. Good job, buddy. Ad break. Let me know when y'all are back. Buddy. Uh. <laughs> ah. Ah. Alright, we'll, we'll pause and wait for the ads to end because shit. <laughs> please keep your hands and please keep your hands and feet inside the ad break at all times. I used to be able. To, I don't know if you're back from the ad break. I'm gonna tell the story anyway. I had a day where I was working security at the exit to the people mover and city walk and the hub, and I'd been there for so fucking long because so they forgot about me and didn't give me a break that I was just standing there like reciting the forward and backwards to the message over and over again in both English and Spanish, and every guest that walked by was laughing their ass off. Mobile walkway exit is approaching. Please, watch your step. Fucking mind. And back. Bup, bup, bup. Oh, now that he has no teeth, also, he can't keep his tongue in his mouth. There's just. All times. So horrible. Except for then he'll, like, lay on my feet. It's my fuzzy little foot warmer, and his tongue will just be darting in and out, so he's licking the top of my foot, and that shit tickles like a motherfucker, and I'm trying, like, not to jump so I don't kick him, and I'm like. <laughs> Duder! Oh my god, we got to get away from the Duder! Runs away! You know what I want? There's two alcohols I want right now. Oh shit! Oh shit! Uh, I'm, I'm broken. I can't afford alcohol. But like, if I had money for alcohol, there's two alcohols I want. One is some old smoky cookie dough whiskey. That's my shit. Love that shit. Their peanut butter whiskey is pretty good too, but I love the cookie dough. Two is several hundred dollars worth of alcohol from Citygate Distillery in St. Augustine. That is that is my place. I love that place. That's where me and Lex go on most of our vacations. We've actually got a walking path from St. Augustine through all the alcohol tasting shit. Like we walk around the city and get drunk for free. It's fun. However impossible it may sound, Nicholas's journal helped me to crack the Soviet ciphers, but my joy turned out to be short-lived. In an unexpected turn of events, I had to track down a spy and try to find any hidden bugs on the way. This is how I reached the ruins of an old inn, where I stumbled across another collection of Hyde's thrilling memories. Cookie dough, sorry. I did not enunciate. Cookie dough. Uh, the only place I found to find it around here is a ABC liquor on Reinhardt. 
Uh, no other place I've had. I went to, uh, went to the doctor. Uh, uh, went to a party last Saturday night. I went to the liquor store next to the Publix I usually shop at. They only have the peanut butter whiskey, which is still quite good. And then I went to the liquor store next to the Winn-Dixie closest to me, and they only have the salted caramel whiskey, which the St. Augustine salted caramel whiskey is fucking fantastic. The Old Smoky one. I've been wanting to try their pickles. They have alcoholic pickles. I've been told that was a bad... I told in the Extra Life Discord that that's a bad idea. Apparently they... Like, if I can have pickles and alcohol, I can get fucked up while enjoying pickles? Like, this sounds like a fucking win, you know? God damn. There was someone that... Oh, I'm thinking of rum chata. Citygate Distillery in St. Augustine, if you're willing to, because they can't sell too far to the city yet, if you're willing to drive an hour and a half for liquor, yo, they have some of the best whiskeys, they have an orange creamsicle moonshine, that is just like my jam, that shit is fucking, for that is my, that is some good ass shit. Largo Bay, if, oh, that's a... Largo Bay Coquito Cream. Oh, apparently you can order it with DoorDash. That's cool. Total wine. Cargo Bay Coquito Cream. Liters for fourteen ninety. Thirteen percent alcohol by volume. I don't know if they're still making it or if it was a seasonal thing, but we went there before Christmas last year to the City Gate Distillery in St. Augustine, and they had a uh, fuck is going on? peppermint moonshine. How all of a sudden... It was like 100%, 100%, I don't know, it was strong as fuck, but like, oh my god, that shit on ice was my jam. I love that shit. Plus, I got super drunk super quick. And how am I supposed to go home? So I quit mixing my own shit because I'm lazy and also I have no idea where my laptop is with all my recipes. But I found a custard monster at a local e cig shop that's by work. And their blueberry slaps, their butterscotch is phenomenal, but they don't seem to carry it in a three anymore. The vanilla is really good. The strawberries, good, but like a lot of strawberry flavors, and I can attest to this from mixing. Strawberry is really fucking hard to make pop. The, the, like the concentrates are very subtle. You have to find other things to mix into it to really make it pop and stand out. Like, it's good, but it's, like, light. I don't like light flavor. I like something heavy. The blueberry's really good. I need to try the blackberry, but... directed by the blueberry and the strawberry. That campsite doesn't look safe. I would not trust that fucking rock. I'm sorry, I know it's probably been there for hundreds of years. It's probably... Five, but I would not trust it. There's a map lying there. You're a map lying there. I can use it to open something, you think? Whoever has set this camp left a m behind a map. A map. Gallons of the stuff. Uh, we've not, we'll see. So burned in, so we should be around here. According to the map, the house should be nearby. I just have to make it through that cave. Or a cave. Apparently, someone likes to write down. Fuck! I meant to read it. Oh. Gallons of the stuff I'll give you, blood. Blood. I don't know when that happened. I woke up and I knew my wife wasn't my wife. Somebody replaced her at night, pretending to be other. I was terrified, but I didn't let it show. I went to our son's room to tell him some mean ladies pretending to be his mummy. So I woke him up by shaking him gently by the shoulders. He opened his eyes. Eyes. And then it hit me. It wasn't my son. I did not know that child. 
Petrified with terror, I ran into the hallway. My hands on my... When I stood back up, I saw a man in the Who the hell are you? What are you doing in my house? I didn't answer. I had never seen such nerve. But when I tried to grab him by the throat, my hand only hit the hard surface of a mirror. Menacing intruder, I fell into ring with a voice that sounded just like mine. <clears throat> J. Capgrass. That is a horrifying mental disorder, and also I think it's called Capgrass. It's literally a mental disorder where you start to feel like everyone in your life replaced by some kind of imposter. Uh, it can manifest as like spies or aliens or there's numerous ways for it to manifest. It is an absolutely horrifying disorder because the individuals who suffer from it cannot make the distinction between reality and their delusion of the replacement. I acknowledge there's no real cure for it either. I'll take that with a grain of salt because it's not like I fucking keep up on these things. Man, fuck you, game. No. No! Yo! There we go. I'll give you bloods. Bloods. Gallons of the stuff. I'll give you bloods. Blood. Yet still, it's not enough. You know what this reminds me of? Uh, it reminds me of... Anthem, without all the cool mechs and flying around and shit. I actually enjoyed Anthem. I mean, yeah, it wasn't a great game. The narrative was a little shallow, but, like, it was fun. I mean, flying around in, like, magical Iron Man suits. Fun. Fun. Yeah, man! That shit was fun. Uh, Jesus fucking Christ, dude. You're really hanging here. Someone yeah, just hanging out. It's fine. These people and leave their bodies here in this fucking godforsaken place where, where Emma and I just happened to move. Fuck, 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 fuck. Fair, you don't seem to like your wife very much. Uh... Also, you don't know that those are real people. They do appear to be real. I mean, I actually never made it to post-game, so I, I can't comment. What I played, I had fun with, though. I love the dude who separated in three and then had to come back into one. That was a fun story arc. I do think it would... I do think they canceled it prematurely. I do think they could have taken more time to try to flesh it out a bit. You know what I'm saying? You're a damn place again. Here comes the place again. Oh, hey! What is this? That. Oh, fuck, fuck. What was that? What is going on? Look, I don't want to tell you your business, but that is not how you use a pickaxe. They must have, must have poisoned me, but how? Coffee, they must have slipped something into my coffee. Or maybe all those transmitters sure. or some kind of emitters to mess with my mind. Sure. Whatever you gotta tell yourself to get to sleep at night, bro. That is also not how pickaxes work. Uh -oh. I played Minecraft, I know exactly how pickaxes work. Okay. Okay. You have to click it two or three times, then it breaks. I'll give you bloods. Bloods. Gallons of the stuff. Uh -oh. It 
you have to admit, though, it had potential. It had potential to be so much more if they had just taken the time to, like, really invest in it and turn it into what it had the potential to be. Uh, the story needed a complete fucking rewrite. I am not going to fucking pretend it did not. But there was the potential there for something truly special. Oh, they completely fucking abandoned it. Which, yo, E... I think it's EA. If you want to hire me, I will fucking write you a narrative for that game. There is a fucking potential there for something truly amazing. It could be the next Destiny if you really took the time with it. The problem is, you had that game and you had another one. One of my viewers bought, bought it for me because I was having trouble with the, uh, the free version on uh, Xbox Game Pass. Damn, they're good. Gotta give them that. They're trying to, they're trying to break me, but I know their sick tricks. I won't let them know. Yeah, you're, you're losing your mind, buddy. Their game by my rules. Hey, you're nuts. There was another game where it was like, you're going to an alien planet because we fucked Earth up so bad that we can't live here anymore. And I don't remember, I can't remember what the fuck it's called. Outlanders or something like that. It was another one, Outriders, Outriders, there you go. That was another one that had like tremendous potential, especially with some of the in-game weapons where they had like that cool fucking like demonic flame cast to them and whatnot. And the abilities, the guns were fun, the abilities for the character classes need a little bit of work. But like, that was another one where you had a narrative that could have been special and would have been fucking fantastic. But, yeah, me too. Me too. I have it on Steam now because of Dip. But, like, there, there's... there's I, I still haven't finished the DLC. I'm, like, halfway through it, roughly. But, like, there's potential there for something truly incredible. But, they just... They just... Fucked up. And it's, like, cool that... But, like, we're doing a games as a service thing these days. Like, you can get back into it. And if you turn it into that something special, new players will fucking buy it when the old players are fucking raging about it. So, like, fucking time. Yeah, I did enjoy that. I had a couple times where I had to crank it down, but... Yeah, no, there, there was a lot of concepts in Outriders that could have worked. Uh, first off, fire that voice actor. Sorry. I don't want to be a dick. As a voice actor who can't get any work, I don't want to be an asshole, but, like... The whole gravelly 90s guy thing is fucking played out. Let that go. Fucking take the muscle tone down a little bit on your character models. Build up actual believable characters in this environment who are behaving realistically as opposed to everyone being 90s. I don't... But, like, th th there's potential there. Both games have a great deal of potential to tell an amazing story and be a shit ton of fun, and they just... Dad decided to go left. Like a generic action game. And I feel like it's a missed opportunity in both cases. Oh, also, if you are an Xbox Game Pass subscriber, I highly recommend. I think it's still on there. If you're not, they're both they're on Steam. The Zero Escape franchise and the AI games that su succeeded. I love all those games. They're fucking phenomenal. They're like basically escape room games. Too difficult to explain, but they have an amazing narrative that carries over three games for the Zero Escape games and two games for the AI games. Shit ties together in really fun ways where you see the connections between characters in different games. Highly recommend. Great games. I'm going to go grab another drink. I'm switching to whiskey now because I'm out of beer. I'm not out of beer. I'm out of cold beer, and I don't want to drink hot beer. That's the same. Those are certain. Fucking. Did they ever do... I know they were talking about doing a reboot of Jet Set. Did they ever do that, or is it just the... Oh, it's a sequel. Okay. All right. I really want to play the new Destiny content, but I can't afford it. I, I love the idea of the seasonal model for Destiny. I don't like the idea that I can't access seasons I missed.
you bloods. Bloods, gallons of the stuff, I'll give you bloods. Oh, then still it's not enough. Bomb rush cyberpunk. They gotta admit I like the name. There's also, they did a sequel to, I only found out about this recently, they did a sequel on Steam to, uh, it's one of my favorite DS games. <laughs> Brain quit fossing on me, I need you to show up, will you please just answer my request? I requested a title from you, will you please just give me the name of the goddamn game? The World Ends With You, they did a sequel to World Ends With You, I fucking love World Ends With You. On the DS, they they ported it to Steam and they ported it to cell phones, and I do not feel like either venue, for lack of a better word, will be able to do it justice. But god damn, that game on DS was amazing, absolutely fucking amazing. I still feel like the story plays itself well enough that like. If you play it on all these other platforms, you'll probably greatly enjoy it, and enjoy it for the narrative it represents. But... Not, not, not the fucking same. Won't be the same as playing it on its original platform. The world ends with you. If you haven't watched it yet, on Netflix they have the, uh... Alice, Alice in Borderlands. That is a phenomenal fucking show. Very, very good. Highly recommend. Very much fun. Plus... It's filmed on location in Japan, and I may never get to go to Japan, so I get to see, like, Buya. Like, and that's, and that's just dope. That's just dope. I, I fucking love that show. So goddamn good. I'm curious, they don't need to do another season, I'm curious if they... Who equals... Give you blood, blood, yeah, yeah. I can't find peaches. I don't know where the fuck he went. He's not on my desktop, and I can't fucking find him. Like I tried to search for him, and he's just fuck my peaches. I know, right? Our friend. Fuck peaches. Fuck me for you. find Lex's bot, and Lex hasn't streamed in like three years. I don't want to use Henry, and also Henry's not attacking. That's okay, you didn't need those shins for anything, you're fine. Controlling television must be the basis of all controls. Suckers, you think you can break me like that? With an animal carcass? With a few dead bodies? Seriously? Who do you think I am? I mean, if they drop you from high enough, yeah, they can break you. I'll kind of break you then. Give you blood. But I want to open that trunk. Gallons of the stuff. Blood. 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 Oh, blood. Yeah, there's no way in hell I'm gonna be able to fucking prove. I have no starting word to work with. I don't believe we have even a chance in hell of getting that fuck open. Fucks. Cause I was curious. I don't know what's in there. Oh well, fuck it. Let's go see our our wife that we clearly love so much. 
Just as much as Steven Crowder loved his wife. All right. Well, fuck, that's not the way we wanted to go. Give you bloods, blood gallons of the stuff. I'm lost and scared. It's cold and there's wolves after me. Shut the fuck up, kid! I have no idea if I'm gonna get right away. I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> so, no, that was the wrong way then, I guess. <laughs> Oh, I need to get off one soon. It's past my bedtime. Also, I gotta pee. Gotta pee. I give you blood, blood, gallons of the stuff. Never let it say, be said that I don't learn. Not because it's not true, but just because I don't want you to say it. Pressing. Oh, man. Fucking point shit out that's true. Fucked up. I'll give you blood. Blood. God, it's awful stuff. Alright, so this is the death point. Is there anything we can touch our fucking climbing rope? Oh no, we lost our climb. There we go, there's no one. I figured it out, y'all. We're not gonna die this time. Maybe. I've been working on your mother all the live long day. Okay. Oh, fuck. Fuck, apparently. can't hide from them. They'll follow you to the end of the world, but if I tell anyone, they'll think I'm crazy, and that's what commies want. They, that, 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 that's how they break their enemies, the dirty bastards. They think they can send a fake cop here and I fall for that like a rookie? No, ain't gonna be that easy with me. Or it could be an actual fucking cop, you weirdo. Where have you been? Where the hell have you been? You know, I, I wanted to find the... Why, why are you crying? What's... Six hours? Wait, what? What? You were gone for six hours. You went and just vanished. 
I didn't vanish. I just tried to remove those damn bugs. What? What? What bugs? What are you talking about? You left me all alone, and some psycho slashed our tires. Are you serious? I called the sheriff, but when we were in front of the house, that guy broke in. Into your office. What, what do you mean? Are you okay? Are you kidding me? Fuck the telegrams. That son of a bitch took the telegrams. The sheriff noticed the broken window. As soon as we went back home... Wait, wait a minute. Who gave you the right to let strangers in? To go through my stuff? He's a sheriff, not a stranger. Besides... Sheriff, my ass. You have no idea how capable the people who want to get me are. They can impersonate anyone. Don't you realize that what I do affects millions of people? You think I'm stupid? I called for help because someone's stalking us. Again, they need a divorce. The they have gone far, and the sheriff is after him. You don't have to act like such a dick. It was me that was in danger. Me, not your nameless millions. And you're on more child. Fuck. What a mess. Hopefully he's left some traces. I better look around. Search the office thoroughly. Okay, so that's can just for you to say that. Okay. Maybe the device will find some traces. Watch out for sparrows. Where's that supposed to be? Confidential. That was not there before. Why can't I click on it? Okay, that's... yeah. I think he's losing his shit, personally. Be able to open it. I should be able to track him down. The blood, blood, Alan's up the stuff. I'll get the blood. Whatever happens, don't leave the house or you'll have anyone on guard. You're leaving me again? Are you crazy? Yes. The sheriff is on it. Let it go. The sheriff doesn't know what he's dealing with. If he really is who he says he is in the first place, he won't help anything. Don't be paranoid. The police are on our side. No one's on our side. No one. As he's clearly lost his cookies. No point hanging around here. Gotta get him before he's off the radar. Those messages are crucial, and he knows that very well. Maybe I'll find another signal outside. I'm drunk. I can't get around doors. I just go for them a trail. I can't see anything with my naked eye, but maybe the localizer will help. The sheriff probably went for the bridge. That's where I should stop looking. What bridge? What the fuck are you talking about, Brosif? There's a bridge. At least I know which way he went. Uh, private property, no entry. Fine. I'll check the area around the bridge. Ninety-eight, ninety-nine, one hundred. Woo! Uh, tower, hillside inch. Towers were.
Oh, I gotta pee so bad. Alright, I'm sorry. I know they're coming too fast and furious. I gotta potty. I'll be right back. Uh, the, yeah. I guess on bridge. The signal is stronger. I'm getting close. That's what she said. Our uh, apple. The fire watch. I can't. Ninety five. Ninety six. Five. Pickaxe that. Oh, there he is. We went up and cut the rope. Maybe I can find a side passage. Okay, so I had to scan that just so I can fucking do something I already knew I could do. Dope! Good game design. Not a problem there at all. Uh, honestly, at this point, we're ready to end. I'm just looking for an auto save. Because I don't know how to manually save this game. Fuck, I'm going. A gorgeous countryside. Emma, me, and my parents. And the movers. Who else knows our location? Someone from the office. Did, did Emma blurt it out to some friends? I don't think so. But I was cautious. I didn't leave any trail. Fuck, why can't I crack it? Because you're not very good at your job. Ron James look.
find a way to switch it off, you little prick bastard. Electric fence. I still am a bastard as you. First, I need to cut off power. I mean, the switch should do that, right? What? One down. There's more. Why are they color coded? And that's just one of many questions, but I feel like it's an important one. Why would you color code your fucking wires? I'll give you blood. Blood, islands of the stuff. Blood, blood, and still it's not enough. Uh oh, we got a treehouse. I love. It. Found this. Book. Get up there. How the fuck we do that? That seems like a dead end right there. There. Two out of three ain't bad. Alright, so we have a green left. Follow blue here back to that bridge. Cause bridge. There's a bridge. Cross it over. And there's green right there. We can see that motherfucker. Look at that bitch. I'm going up here to this little, 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 little fucking hut. On the top of this here ridge. Figure out how to get to that motherfucker and we are good to go. I'll break some boards. Alright, here it is. Alright, we gotta use our, our hooky thingy. We use our hooker. There's a hooker. Good job, hooker. Fuck off. That was the last one. I won't be electrocuted now. That's a shame. Where the fuck's that wire? All of this and she take us back to the fence. Bloods. Ones. I mean, theoretically, we your game. I'm just living in it. But I'm just saying, we fucking already cut the power. No matter where that switch is on or off. Oh, hey! Cool, we've hit an auto save. Alright. Well, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you motherfuckers hanging out with me. You are beautiful, beautiful mammals. As always, I love your faces. I will see you next time. Until then, my friends, take care of yourselves. Have a great night. And, uh, you know. I'm falling on my shirt. <laughs> anyway, love y'all. Have a great night. Bye.